a cantar esta canción con mucho cariño de mi corazón a la República Dominicana, la casa del merengue y la casa de la bachata. Voy a cantar esta canción con mucho cariño de mi corazón. Okay, it's raining a lot and uh, it's been pretty noisy here. It looks like we've got a lull in the rain, so let's uh, let's get to this. This is uh, number two, second edition of uh, some news and commentary or context. And um, today I'm kind of in a weird cynical mood, so this may come across as a little negative or cynical. I don't know, I'll try not to. Okay, we've got Colombia says El Gaucho has joined forces with the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, so they have just put out an article saying that the ex-FARC commander, which was the criminal organization in Colombia that for 40 years subjugated parts of Colombia, uh, and they've signed a peace treaty and they've disarmed and faded into the woodwork. And what the FARC always were, under the guise of being socialist revolutionaries, they were always just drug criminals. And so this article says that uh, they have now joined forces with the Sinaloa cartel. And I don't understand this article because it's fairly well known, and I've said it in several videos prior to this, including one that goes back months and months and months before the recent activity. Um, they are already part of it. In that area, there's people from Bolivia and from Mexico from that cartel. They're all there. They're working together. It's not like they're sitting there in separate camps and this is his and this is the Mex. They're all in this together. They're all drug criminals. And he put out a statement saying that, you know, doing the drug thing is just a sideline for him. He's the revolutionary. They only say that, and and for decades in Colombia, they said that because they're trying to draw on sympathies. All they are is drug criminals or criminals in general. They live on kidnappings and extortion, primarily drugs. So this article, I, I, I read the article and I'm going no kidding, kind of everybody already knows this, but yeah, that's, that's the news of the day. Uh, we've got another one, um, maybe because these articles are, uh, seriously, you're making this a news article, we've got another one that falls into this category and it says the tram and new buses will continue trend towards cleaner air in Cuenca. Uh, no kidding, when you install an electrical train that's going to take the place of some of these buses that are diesel um, out of tune and below black smoke, it, it's going to get cleaner. And when you're replacing those buses with new hybrid or electrical buses, of course it's going to get cleaner. I don't, I honestly don't understand the point of an article that's just so obvious, but that's the news. Another article, new defense and interior minister suggests tougher border approach. I won't even comment there. I'm, my head might blow up. And the last one I'm going to talk about today is Moreno apologizes for saying cancer is caused by toxic thoughts and habits. So he was in Cuenca and he just kind of was talking about this, that, and the other thing. And, and he just threw out there that this was the case in his mind. And it blew up on social media. They say that the same day he got over 200,000 comments. It appears that most people are giving him a real hard time telling him that, you know, he's ignorant and, and how hurtful and painful it is that he would say things like this. And these poor cancer sufferers, how abusive it is towards them. Uh, it's a firestorm of criticism against the guy to the point where he came out after, you know, some things calling him outrageous and his comments inconceivable. He came out and apologized for his insensitivity. And I have to say, 
Um, I truly don't get why the world is going this way. Or maybe I get it, but maybe it just appalls and disgusts me that people have to apologize for every thought they might have. You know, I found it very interesting that that uh, Kanye put out a statement that he loves everybody and uh, people should be able to have individual independent thought. And, and to me, that, that's another no-brainer, but for some reason, that's, oh my God, it's so controversial. And here's, a, here's another case of this. You know, the guy just, you know, he says something. He didn't hurt anybody. And if somebody's feelings were hurt over this, get over it. I mean, you're just being too sensitive. There's nothing here to hurt your feelings. And everybody has to play this victim thing. It's like, oh, these poor cancer sufferers. Well... I was a cancer sufferer. I, you know, I was in bed for a couple years. I, I was told I was going to die. I had a couple months to live. It was over. And I heard it and I acknowledged it, but I actually never believed it. And so I continued to plan my post illness uh, life, including my trip here to Ecuador and deciding that it would be Ecuador and I, I, I did all that not because I thought I was gonna die But because I just didn't believe it. I Can't explain where that comes from. It wasn't a matter of denial I completely got what they're saying and when you add into the fact that of the same age my much older brother got this same type of cancer and died um, a very aggressive form so when I got it and they told me that uh, it's like, yeah, I hear them. And, and it wasn't a matter of denial. I just, um, I just didn't believe it because it wasn't factual to me. I just didn't feel that. So maybe, maybe that's some sort of denial, but I, I didn't feel it was that way. It wasn't that I couldn't face the truth. I faced the truth and I was prepared for that if that's what came. But Having said that, I still didn't believe that so that I won't, you know, I'm not just going to put everything aside. I'm just going to continue planning my life in case I'm right. And so that's what I did. And um, so I read his comments. Now, I don't know. Nobody seems to have quizzed him of why he said that or what's his thinking behind it. But in, in, in a sense, I can relate, but I certainly didn't take offense to it. And if I did, that's my problem, right? It's, you know, I, I can choose whether I want to be offended or not. And, and entirely too many people are being offended over nothing. So I'm thinking about this as I'm reading the article, and maybe there's something to what he's trying to say. I mean, did I not die because I didn't view things negatively? and that I had a positive outlook? Did it, did it affect me at all? I have no idea. Is it a possibility? Yeah, there's been studies about things like that, that you have these self-healing mechanisms that we know very little about and that we can bring on illnesses and that we can uh, you know, affect cures to illnesses based on things that we do. So there may be something to that, I have no idea. But to excoriate the guy, to rip into him to call him names and to say he's insensitive and to try out all these injured feelings so that you know he looks like an idiot it's like give me a break if your feelings are hurt it's your problem i don't understand why if he has that opinion he can't say it i don't get it but those are the news articles and those are my opinions and a bit of context. So unless I get blasted, and I probably will, I'll see you with these again next week. See you later. You know you could.